I'm Dan Johnson talking to an old friend, Paul Mather from M Squared. And Paul, I'm looking over my shoulder and your shoulder at a 912 engine and I'm getting kind of a memory flash that I saw this a long time ago, didn't I? Yes, you did, Dan. We actually did the first M Squared with an 80 horsepower 912. And uh, that's what the airplane was developed around. And of course, back in 1996, they were very expensive motors compared to what we were flying. Well, and very unusual of an air, on an aircraft of this type. You were one of the first to apply it to this kind of airframe, right? Yes, I was. And that's why we did all of our load testing based on the 912. Ah. And now as the 912 series has evolved, we decided, well, let's go back and put it on and let's see what the marketplace will take. If it will handle the uh, price of the 912. And you can do, you're one of the few guys in the what we used to call the two-place ultralight space. I guess those words are banned now, yeah. but basically that's what this is. And you're one of the few, very few, that has gone to the trouble of doing all that, of proving the airplane to FAA satisfaction, which whatever you think about ASTM standards, folks, it's a lot of effort, it's a lot of paperwork, it's a lot of proving, and FAA's not just taking your word for it, are they? No, they're not. It took us 18 months in the beginning to do this, and it takes at least one month a year to maintain it. Uh, you got, yeah, it's not, it's not done and forget about it and throw it all away. You right. gotta keep after it, right. and you gotta keep up with your customers who have them as well. That's correct. So when I think about all that, I go, well, 55,000, that was the number you just yep. said, for a 912 powered M squared, Oh, that doesn't strike me as such a big number. Well, there's always costs, you know, marks that people won't pay. Well, I understand and, that. And you've got lower yeah. cost ones for people that yes. want that. That's but true. if you want to be out there in a flight school environment training folks to fly Part 103 airplanes, which you're very capable of doing in this machine, at that price point, you got something that's going to go and go and go for them. That's correct. We uh, still have that 700 pound useful load. So we do lift more than the airplane weighs. Yeah, that's an amazing so that's fact. that's a big deal. And uh, actually uh, here at Air Venture, uh, I had flown a 320 pound, six foot seven guy <laughs> off our thousand foot usable runway with trees on the ends. So we, uh, we've been operating that, there. I gotta fun. repeat that. 330 pounds, 330, six foot eight. Six foot eight. Uh, that is a big person. He's a big guy. Um, and he got in here and and not only a uh, thousand foot runway, but one with some lumps and bumps on yeah, it too. It's a wibbly wobbly one, yeah. Which, uh, you know, you go down a smooth runway, you can accelerate more evenly, and I'm and guessing you had no issue. Not issues at all. As a matter of fact, he loved it, and uh, he lives in Michigan, and he's talking about purchasing it in the square. All right, cool. Well, that's great, Paul. Some excellent stuff. We got a little background noise now. We'll ask you to speak as loud as you can, power over the helicopters, but. Um, as I looked over your shoulder now, it just went behind a cloud, but I was getting all this sparkly stuff going on. This is a fabric wing. How is that possible? I mean, it's a Dacron wing, Dacron. excuse me. Yeah. How was, what was I seeing there? Well, when we uh, put the wings on and we pull them tight, we do put a clear coat, automotive style, clear on it with a flex agent in it. And on these wings, I've been shooting them with a fire mist mixed into the clear coat. And what it actually does is, when the sun hits the wing, it diffuses the rays and could cause less UV in here. Oh, so this is not just a visual Pretty. Hollywood it's sparkly thing, it's function. That's right. <laughs> and uh, some of the paint guys that I deal with said that that's, that would help. So we're trying it. And this airplane, of course, 30 hours, I put 10 on it at the show. Is that right? Now, yeah. yeah. So I want to touch on that because I know, let's see, what was it a couple of years ago? I wrote a piece about you and called you the, I don't know, the king of ultralights or something, but that was because you did so many demos. Yes. Most people come out here and they're proud and they should be proud if they do 20, 30 demos. How many did you do this week? We do 20 a day. <laughs> and uh, right now we're, we're just a little over 100. And, Is that right? You're uh, over 100 lose, again? Then. Yeah, we did lose uh, half of a day there. You know, we couldn't fly but we'll probably surpass the 110 or so tomorrow. Wow, we'll do that's a few an tomorrow amazing night number. And some tonight. I mean, you are literally beating any four, five, six other companies combined yep. doing the demos. And I'm not putting them down by saying that. They're working at that. You are really working at doing what you're doing. Yeah, well, we have our system where we flow well out on the, at, the, uh, at the line. And my airplane is very easy to get in and out of. We pop the window, they stand up, walk out, get in, pop it down, let's close the door, and we go. Yeah, no so struggle to get inside. There's, so There's no lifting your legs and wiggling around, so it's a very easy airplane to operate. So all the fellas that are 
increasingly a little less flexible, I'll call it, than they used to be when they were young bucks. Uh, no problem getting in and out of the M-Square. None whatsoever. None great, whatsoever. great stuff. Did you participate in the Make-A-Wish thing? Uh, we're doing it this afternoon. They haven't gotten here yet. Okay, so They're tell a little late. That's a very cool thing. Give us just a few words about what that means uh, that you're doing for some young folks. Yeah, the, everyone knows Make-A-Wish. These are terminally ill children, and uh, they're, some of them say they want to fly. So they bring them out, we put them in the plane, we take them for the flight of their life. And uh, That's their parents, cool. our family also. That's very cool. I'm glad you're doing that. You and some others as well, it's not just you, but that's a great gesture. And I'm guessing that it is the flight of their life. So, oh, yeah. Because, you know, going up in a Cessna, that's great too. Going up in an airliner, well, that's like sitting in your living room. This is some real flying. Yep, you got wind around you, they get to see everything. Some of these kids could be six to ten years old, and uh, they barely have enough uh, girth to get the seatbelt tight. <laughs> Got to keep pulling it down and down. Just the opposite of some of the rest of us who yeah. need those extenders. I don't yet, anyway, but uh, got to watch the hamburger consumption, I guess. Right. Some great stuff, Paul. A lot of good information. You've got a line of models, and you've got a fresh new look on your website, so tell us how we find that on the web. We'll put it on the screen for folks. All righty, it's www.msquaredaircraft.com. There you go. Thank you very much. So lots of good information. Lots more about the M Squared line. I think I've flown everything you've ever built yes. at one time or another and reported on that so you can find all that and lots more affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Paul Mather and myself here in the ultralight area of AirVenture Oshkosh.